My guest today had an amazing career at Arizona State playing volleyball and was an All-Pac-10 performer in 1996. She's gone on to be a great coach of the sport at various levels, and she is a true Sun Devil legend, the one and only Terry Cox Span. Terry, hey. it is such an honor to be talking with you today. Thank you. An honor for me as well. Yes, for sure. So I was reading up on you and I saw that you're a native of Long Beach, California. What was it like growing up there? Uh, a little rough, but um, it was awesome. I was uh, raised by my single mother, Gloria Cox, and she did an excellent job keeping us off the streets and in school and kept us busy by allowing us to play club volleyball, which was not like a big thing back then, but it was an opportunity to stay active in sports and keep our mind uh, away from other things that a lot of our uh, peers were being surrounded with and stuff like that. So it was a good way to stay off the streets. So <laughs> I guess it was a, a positive upbringing for me. Yeah. Y yes, yes, for sure. I thought, I thought it was interesting. You grew, you grow up in Long Beach and then for college, you, you come to Tempe. So I think it's safe to say that, that you're no stranger to the heat. Uh, yep. Well, in California, we do have the beach and, um, I didn't live too far from the beach, so that was nice, but the, the dry heat's a little bit different and in, in the valley, um, but I don't mind it. I actually, I struggle in the cold, if anything, so um, it was a, a nice, easy commute for my mother and my grandmother to come watch me play uh, on the weekends when we used to compete, and it wasn't too far of a flight, so it worked out well. Mm. So how did your, how did your interest in the sport of volleyball, you, you know, really grow and take off? I mean, honestly, I was blessed to have an amazing uh, coach. I, I played for a, a man named Roger Goodwin, who's out of California, and I felt like he was just one of the best coaches that uh, influenced me. I actually wasn't supposed to try out when I did. Uh, he just noticed that I was sitting down in the corner, and he's like, why aren't you playing? And I was like, my sister is doing it. And he's like, well, both of you can do it. And so that's how I actually got started. And I was uh, blessed to have the opportunity. I wasn't very good at the beginning, but I fell in love with it. And uh, it was exciting for me. So it's a fast paced uh, sport and uh, it's fun. You meet a lot of new people that eventually become some of your best friends and family. Um, and so uh, it was just something I always enjoyed doing. I started at a young age uh, and never stopped. So. Yeah. And you're absolutely right that it's such a fast paced and fun sport. Um, I was actually at I was watching a couple of ASU volleyball games at, a, you know, at, at the arena the other day. And uh, I'll tell you this, the game, when you're seeing it live, it's so much faster than, yes. just what, than what you see on TV. Yeah. And the game's gotten a lot quicker since uh, I played for sure. And the girls have gotten a lot bigger and taller and stronger. So um, people don't realize how tall the girls are either. Um, they're so big tall and so strong when i uh, first started out playing of course you wanted to uh the tall girls to play but we we uh, were i was considered an undersized volleyball player so i had to rely on my athletic ability fast uh, foot speed and my jump and that was one of my strengths um for sure but um as the game has progressed uh the players are definitely taller and uh back in the day i want to say like like skinny was in in volleyball and that's not how it works anymore. You've got to have that grit. You got to have that girth. You got to be strong, a little bit more thicker. And um, just because it's just such an aggressive sport, people don't realize how, how hard it is on your body and, and stuff like that. So you really have to take care of yourself and, and lift and, and uh, eat right. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what led to your decision to attend ASU? Uh, well, I was originally dead set on going to like Florida and I, it was my flight home that I realized my mom will never be able to come see me play because it's so far away. She works a full-time job, works on the weekends. And so uh, I really liked the head coach, Mary Wise, and I loved everything about Florida, but uh, something told me that uh, with my grandma living out of Prescott, Arizona, um, and it being an easy drive, uh, I came here to Arizona a lot as a kid, sometimes stayed in the summer in, in uh, Chino Valley. And uh, I just knew it was an easy commute. So I just thought it was 
probably best. And when you're from the West Coast, like back in the day, the Pac-10 was what you wanted to do. Like nowadays, everyone's like, oh, I want to play in the Power Four. Well, now it's Power Four. It used to be Power Five. And but for West Coast kids, we were like, no, we want to stay in the Pac-10 and which obviously ended up being the Pac-12. But uh, that was huge for us West Coast kids. So it was a dream come true for sure. Yeah, for sure. Your coach at ASU was Patty Snyder Park. Uh, what are your favorite memories of uh, having her as a coach? Uh, the cool thing about Patty was she was very uh, free spirit, open minded. She loved to individually get to know all her players. Um, she was well connected with us individually. Uh, she knew kind of what made us tick, what what our struggles were. But she always took the time to get to know us on a personal level, most importantly. And um, I have a lot of fond memories of her. She was a little crazy sometimes. After I started coaching, I realized, wow, you can't do that. <laughs> can't do some of that stuff anymore. But the thing that I really appreciate about Patty is she always thought, like, if you're not necessarily able to travel a lot in life or um, maybe this is not, this is what it is. This is the, the big opportunity for you to get around and, and leave the States or leave, you know, go to different States and try new foods or whatever. She was all about that. So we always ate at good restaurants. Um, we always, uh, went and did fun things on our trips. She took us to the, the beach when we'd go to California, she'd, uh, take us, you know, to see the changing of the leaves in, in Oregon and, and walk the stream. Uh, she'd get us out of the, the hotel just to go do different things and uh, try new restaurants, try different food. It's just, you know, she wanted us to appreciate life. And I love that about her because coming from an inner city area and not really getting to do a lot of things growing up, I always appreciated that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in what ways did she help you develop as a player? Uh, well, I was probably one of Patty's uh, thorns. <laughs> um, I, you know, coming from a, a big volleyball program uh, growing up, I probably questioned a couple things here or there and used to drive her nuts, but I loved her patience with me. She appreciated that I was just a, a go-getter. Um, I was an undersized player. So if we were hitting and, and working on location attacking, I was like, well, I have to shot because I have a big block and it's different for me or whatever. And she's like, Terry, just do it. You know, so uh, that's my payback with my kids now, I guess. <laughs> so um, but Patty, let me just be me. You know, she let me play uh, how I how I uh, trained my whole entire life. And Patty used to get out there with us and, you know, play. Man, I remember her being like, full on like six to seven months pregnant and diving for balls all over the place and getting after it. Like she was still playing. So we respected that about her. Um, and if we were ever disrespectful or did anything, she would make us run. She'd hold us accountable. And um, I didn't have any issues with it. I might've complained about it at the time, but for the most part, I always appreciated her consistency as a coach, uh, which uh, was awesome. And so she just made it really light and fun for us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when people talk about great ASU sports seasons, right, in the year 1996, most people are referring to football, right? You know, of course, that legendary team with Jake Plummer, Pat Tillman, and your husband. Um, but also, yeah. also in 96, you had one of the best seasons in ASU volleyball history. All Pac-10 honors. You led the team with 441 kills, 426 digs, and 19 service aces. Just, uh, just, just amazing, dominant stuff. What was your mindset going into that season? I pretty much just always played fearless. You know, I, I, I loved the game. Um, I had a lot to prove as an undersized player because a lot of people, you know, just even in the recruiting process, people told me I was too short at five seven to play front row. So focus on being like a back row specialist. That was before the libero existed. Um, and so I, I wanted to be able to prove to everyone that I was good enough to play uh, front row and six rotations. And I brought a lot to the game as, as an overall um, well-rounded uh, volleyball player. I was great at passing. I was smart with my attack range. Um, I was aggressive, you know? Um, and so I was a big, uh, I wanted to go after it every single time, you know, but I, I wasn't just all about swinging. I was all about just being the smarter player on the court too. Uh, I loved playing back row um, and I used to get hyped for my front row attackers. I used to love to tell my front row attackers what to do, what was open, how many blockers were up, just anything to help us be the most successful team. 
I was all about that. So it was definitely just that competitive nature, that drive where I was just always wanting to prove myself and be a positive role model. There's more kids that are my height that enjoy volleyball than the, uh, the rarity of the taller players. So I knew that a lot of people looked up to me and, and came to watch and, and I always wanted to put on a show and, but most importantly, be successful with my team. Yeah, for sure. Did you expect that you would have a season that would go down in the record books as one of the best ever at ASU? No, I never would have expected that. You're, this is all news to me. So uh, that was before rally scoring too. So it's a huge difference of, of volleyball. Uh, back then, you know, or I should say now, every time you make a mistake, you're scoring a point for the other team, but you can't think like that. So it's just a different style uh, of mentality, I guess, and an approach to the game. Uh, one of my teammates, Christine Garner, who was one of the most aggressive uh, players in, in ASU history, I used to watch her bounce balls, but then she'd go on these little funks of a couple airs, but because she was so dominant with her heavy arm, she can get away with it because we would just know to side out right away. So if we as hitters made errors, we would tell, tell our setter, you know, Tracy Heflin or Jolyn Fatulu, whoever it was at the time, hey, set me again and I want to put this ball away. And then our setters believed in us. They had faith in us and we'd go after it or whatever. So it was it's always just like that mentality of just like side out right away. Don't worry about the last air move on. Uh, which is a little bit different from this generation because it's like, oh gosh, I'm making too many errors and I can't do that. So it's just a different mental mindset for sure. You had a match against Washington that season where you had 30 kills and 27 digs, just just an insane game, a pretty amazing stuff. Um, so 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 do you, so like do do you have like any specific memories from uh, that match? Gosh, no. I mean, you have you have your research done. You know, I have so many great memories of some uh, matches. Was it home or away? I can't even remember. Was that an away game? Do you know? Well, I, I believe it, it was. I'm pretty sure it was an away game. I'm pretty sure. OK, yeah. I mean, obviously, it was always tough to play in our conference. The crowds were always crazy. They used to yell a lot of uh, stuff, you know, at us as on the court and I think I was motivated with the trash talking, whether it's from the crowd or through the net or anything like that. People don't think that happens in volleyball, but it definitely does. And um, Washington's a, a tough place to play or, or just even a, a tough team. A lot of those players that I competed against uh, went on and are still coaching. Leslie uh, is now the head coach at Washington. So we used to battle and she was amazing. Um, you know, it's funny as an undersized player, if you play against teams that aren't used to undersized attackers, sometimes they struggle uh, defending or reacting to our type of play. And so it kind of throws things off a little bit. So I, I a lot of times I correlate my success on the court to team struggling or just like I said, I like to not it's not just all about hitting. It's about about placement and range and finding those open spots to get those kills and Defense was just a mental mindset thing for me. If Terry then could play now, I would have probably been a libero. I mean, I jumped high, but I probably wouldn't have been, have been a libero. I just had a good passing platform. I love to get dirty in the back row and die for everything. And it was just kind of like something I was always hungry for. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's safe to say that 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 that, that with you being such a competitor, that obviously led to a lot of success. Thank you. Um, now, after your time at ASU, you got into coaching. You went to you went to Xavier College Prep. You did some amazing things there, obviously. So how did you get into coaching? How did that come about? Well, it's funny. I always knew I wanted to become a coach eventually. Uh, like I said, I played for uh, Roger Goodwin out of California, and he was an uh, exceptional coach. And every single time he would talk, I would listen. If it wasn't uh, pertaining to necessarily my position. I still wanted to listen to hear what he had to say. And I remember him saying to me, I think it was a drill and I had, I was tossing and I remember him saying, you're a good tosser. That means you're going to be a coach someday. And I'm like, really? And I stuck with that ever since I was like, I'm going to be a coach, you know? So, um, and I, until this day, I still brag about how I'm a good tosser. And so it's like a, a, a joke in our gym or whatever, but for the most part, you know, I think he led by example and I looked up to him. I learned a lot from him and how I coach today is it resembles a little bit of what he does. I still uh, do a lot of the things that he did uh, 
with my with my teammates in the gym, like drills or um, uh, warm ups or whatever it is. So I definitely had a positive upbringing. Um, and again, I love the sport. So I just wanted to be involved and I wanted to stay involved. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, um, I think it's so cool th that he had an influence and an impact on your coaching style. I think that's so cool. Absolutely. He was awesome. Mm. Um, and at, at Xavier College Prep, uh, you, know, you know, like I was saying, you did some amazing things there. You led the Gators to back-to-back -to -back state championship appearances. You won the championship in 2000. So, I mean, I think it's safe to say that you started your coaching career with a bang. I did. I, I was lucky. I walked into a very successful uh, high school program out of Phoenix, and they're obviously one of the most successful uh, uh, volleyball programs and, and just in sports in general. They always have uh, great uh, sports. And uh, Sister Lynn and Sister Joan out of Xavier were very uh, supportive of me coming in and, and kind of like – I was young. I was very young. I think I was 22 or 23 when I took that job. And I kind of uh, had a lot to prove as a young coach uh, going into a um, small all girls Catholic school. And I went to a Catholic school growing up. And so it was an easy transition in that sense. But for the most part, like I just had a lot of kids that wanted to play, wanted to compete. Um, they resembled uh, me as a as a player and I liked coaching them. I got the most out of them and it was awesome. So I definitely valued my time. Uh, it was only a short time, but heck, you know, runner up and state champions, that's pretty good. So it was exciting for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will tell you that that one of my favorite experiences um, about coming to ASU and being in the sports journalism program um, has been actually being able to cover some events at, at Xavier. Uh, um, that's because that I've, I've gotten to go out there as part of my coursework and it's so much fun. The place is great. The people there are so nice. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely some great experiences there. So, yeah, well, they love their sports. They respect their sports. They invest in their, their coaches, their, their athletes. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's so much more than just the sport. It's about uh, mentoring young women to be confident, uh, you know, young women and prepare them for adulting later on in life and to approach the, the world, the workforce, everything with, with confidence as, as uh, intelligent young women. So it's just lifting more girls up and reminding them they can do it too. And so it was a great experience for sure. Mm -hmm. After a year as an assistant coach at Texas Tech, you came back to Tempe to be an assistant coach for ASU. So what was it like coming back to ASU, but this time as a coach? Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny just because I stepped away for a little bit and I was focused on high school. And then when I went to Texas Tech, you know, I didn't really know a lot of the players or what was going on. And uh, Patty and I had talked and I kind of knew she was close to possible retirement. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to to not have an opportunity to come back and coach at my alma mater and, and for her because she was such an awesome coach. Um, she was my first female head coach. And so. Um, while I sit here and rave about Roger, Patty uh, was an example of a strong, independent woman for me as a as a an excellent uh, head coach at the collegiate level, and not just because of volleyball, but because she did it as you know a wife and as a mom. And I'll never forget why she told me she was getting out of coaching. Eventually, was because she was. It was hard for recruiting. She didn't want to slam the door on on her kids or anything while she was on the phone with a recruit. And I just that stuck with me because I remembered how much she sacrificed to be in the gym with us um, back in the day. And we had late practices. I remember going like, you know, three to six or sometimes we want to get out of there till seven o'clock at night. And so I knew she wasn't always there for dinner and she wasn't seeing her kids after school. So I definitely appreciated her her commitment and sacrifice to to us because, you know, it's hard to find, you know, powerful women in these positions because a lot of women aren't able to, to do that. Uh, but she was, she had a, a great husband, uh, John Park, who always supported everything that she did as a, as a head coach. And he was always bringing the kids up there and we loved the kids. Sometimes they travel with us and stuff like that. So I definitely uh, wanted to be a part of, of, of that environment and, and uh, go out with her. And I, I was blessed that I got to do that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. As a player and a coach, what does it mean to you to have left such 
a great legacy in Tempe? Well, I feel like I'm still here, you know, I'm <laughs> still around. Um, I love to support uh, uh, ASU volleyball from a distance sometimes just because I'm so busy and I have kids that are actively involved in sports and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm still in the volleyball community. There's a lot of other uh, active coaches in the club scene that are alumni as well. So we kind of all stay connected. There was a time where we all kind of like lost touch a little bit, but leave it to Patty. She was always so influential on bringing us all back. And so um, she's really the reason why all of us are still some somewhat still connected and, and in touch with each other, just because she was always that glue. She would pick up the phone. She would text. She did whatever she needed to do to get us all back. So um, it was it was definitely, you know, a great experience. And, you know, I'm still here. So. I, I loved my experience in, in Arizona. I, I'm not too far from Tempe. It's like five minutes down the road. And I actually used to always practice on ASU's campus with my club. So um, it's, you know, I'm a diehard Sun Devil. I love that environment. I wish more of my kids would go to ASU, but, you know, <laughs> I always tell them it's the best five years of my life. <laughs> They're like five. I'm like, yes. So, um, but yeah, it, it was awesome. So it feels good to still be around, still stay involved. So to currently support, I love JJ, Presley, Ellen. I think they're doing a great job. Um, they've brought a lot to the program since uh, the last. Gosh, it hasn't even been a, has it even been a full year? Like pretty much a little bit over a year, right? And they've yeah. just done a great job to get the program back on track. And I uh, just hired. Um, uh, I had another ASU player, but not, now I have three players that that coach for me. Um, and so it's just awesome to have them in the gym as well. Hey, 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 that, that's awesome. That, that's awesome. You still have that Sun Devil pride. It's great. Yes. To see. Yeah. So, well, it, it, it's hard because my husband and I, we, we're both obviously Sun Devils. And so uh, we're always rooting for, you know, all the Sun Devil sports and, and we follow all of them regardless. And it's different because some sports are, are getting, you know, bigger. Like I didn't even know we had ice hockey and now I'm like, wow, okay, well now I know. Uh, but obviously we're, we're true fans of football and volleyball. And then we like to pick up the other sports as well. Anything to, to support ASU. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. For many years now, you've been coaching at Arizona Storm Elite Volleyball. Uh, you are currently yep. the club director and owner for Arizona Storm. How did you get started there? Well, obviously my passion is, is coaching. I've had a lot of, you know, uh, positions as, as far as coaching club programs and just, you know, like being involved at the, at the club level. And it, you're so influential at this level that it's, it's very rewarding. Um, you know, at the collegiate level, you're recruiting kids, you're begging kids to come play for you at this level. You're, you're helping kids find a future home and hopefully they have a positive experience like what you did. And so that's just always, you know, it's, it's, it's very rewarding for me to know these kids at a young age uh, figure out their passion, figure out what their, uh, you know, what their icks are or what, you know, uh, motivates them and, and find a good fit at the national level so they can continue to play on at the next level. So um, it's kind of just like a passion for me. It's kind of a, another way to stay competitive too. Like I love to like make sure all my kids are going someplace when they're done for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I have, I have so much respect for that because, I mean, you're not you're, you're not just coaching these young athletes, but you're making a positive impact in, in their lives uh, moving forward. And I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. Yeah, it's all about life lessons with me, too. You know, I want to best prepare them for the workplace, adulting, being a, a positive influence with their children someday and uh, just making sure I'm I'm giving them all the the little extra tools that you know, that they're getting at home, but they're, you know, sometimes kids like to listen to their coaches a little bit more uh, than their parents. You know how that might be with your parents. You kind of are a little bit more stubborn, but when your coach says it, oh, okay, I'll do it. So I'm that extra push sometimes for sure. What's the most rewarding part for you about being able to work uh, with these young athletes? Oh, I mean, I love seeing their beautiful smiles every day. You know, I know they're, they love what they're doing. Like I did. Um, sometimes I look at them and I just have to remind myself that was me. Um, and I just want them to have that same opportunity. Uh, youth sports can be brutal at times. It can be very competitive. It can be mentally draining. Um, 
you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of mental health issues in, in life in general. And so I just like to stay connected with my athletes and make sure that they know that they are loved, valued, appreciated. Uh, I, I love to know about how their day went, if they met someone new, how they're doing in the classroom, how they're how they're doing things in the community, all of that good stuff. And I just I, it keeps me young to be around these young girls. And um, I just I love being around them. So it's just overall, it's very fun for me. It's fulfilling. And it's, you know, again, a competitive environment environments just make sure they're also happy with what they're doing. Yeah, for sure. Last question here. What is the biggest piece of advice that you have for aspiring volleyball players? Wow. Dream big and don't ever let someone tell you you can't do it. You know, I think uh, I had so many people tell me I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough, whatever it was. And I always was determined to prove them wrong. Uh, when you're up top, you have a lot of haters and uh, don't let that affect you at all. You know, that should be motivation, if anything, for sure. Yeah, well, well you've certainly, well, as a player and as a coach, Terry, you've certainly accomplished a lot. Uh, you, know, you know, having that competitive mindset, it's taken you to uh, many great places and you're still doing great work today. So God, all the respect in the world for you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you allowing me to have uh, this conversation because I not only forget about my past sometimes, but it's it's nice to um, hear it and be reminded of the importance of making sure my future players can have opportunities like this as well. So thank you for giving me a platform.